Hi, and welcome to worship. My name is Michelle Hopp, and I serve the Poinette Community United Methodist Church here in Wisconsin, and I hope you've had a great week. We are going to continue on with our series of um, Summer of Love, and we've been talking about better ways to be loving people. And first, we started out with don't hold a grudge. You can be much more loving towards your friends and family if you let go of those grudges and mend, mend uh, those broken fences. And then last week we talked about share what you have. We don't need to keep everything to ourselves. We can be better neighbors, better, better community people if we share our resources with one another. And today we're going to talk about loving our family better. And the way we can do that is spend time with them. That is so important. I hope it's something that you really consider after hearing, hearing the scripture especially. So let's join together in an opening prayer. God of miracles and transformations, come to us now as we seek to move through distractions. Speak your divine love into our hearts. Help us feel the revelations in your world and move to strengthen our bonds and neighbors, uh, community, and families. We pray all this in the name of the resurrected Savior. Amen. So the scripture that we're going to be focusing on is that of Mary and Martha, the two sisters who needed to put together a meal, or thought they needed to put together a meal, for Jesus and the disciples when they came to visit their house. So in, um, in worship today, we heard a little bit about, in a little, we heard excerpts from Harry Chapin's folk song from 1974 called Cats in the Cradle, and it's about an absent dad. He's so busy with his career, he doesn't spend quality time with his son. He misses his first steps. He buys him a baseball, but then doesn't have time to play with it. He just doesn't take time to be with his son, but get his son looks up to him and says, I'm going to be just like my dad someday. I'm going to grow up just like him. Well, as, as the son gets older and goes to college, he doesn't want to spend time with his dad now. Instead, he asks for the car keys so that he can go hang out with his friends. And then when he has an opportunity to, when the dad is retired and has more time and wants to see his son and grandchildren, the son goes, oh, the kids have the flu. I'm really busy with work but it's really nice talking to you. And that's when the dad finally figured it out. He, he says in, the, in the, the last verse, he'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. Many parents regret the choices that rob them of time with their family. They don't choose the important things as Jesus tells us to do. And we'll learn that he tells Mary and Martha to do that. And my husband had periods of bad health when my kids were in elementary school. And so I worked at a business that was open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I would take on every extra shift that was available. I was working 60, 70 hours a week sometimes. And while that kept the roof over our heads and it put food on the table and it, you know, it took care of the family, my daughter tells me today, mom, when you went to, off to work one more time, I would just think, I want my mama to be home. Did I, did I choose the right thing? Did I make the right choice? Her words haunt me today. What would have been a better choice? I know that, you know, perhaps we should have moved into an apartment or, you know, I just, I don't know what the right answer is, but it, it, it does haunt me and it's hard to make those decisions. You know, we all have moments when we're distracted by busyness and even good things like church work can distract us from enjoying and prioritizing our families. I've learned that as a pastor, I am not good anymore with prior prioritizing my family. In Christianity Today article written by Pastor Roger Hernandez, he says, for the first 10 years of my ministry, I was a terrific pastor and a terrible husband and father. I neglected my wife. I passed on the responsibility of raising my kids to babysitters. I led my church well. We grew by about 100 people a year. Yet, I was not present in my own home. Spending time with our family can be really challenging because we're often pulled in many different directions. 
And we tend to take for granted that our loved ones are always gonna be there. So we, pull, we put off spending quality time with them until everything else is done. I did this uh, this last week. I was working on my seminary course of study. It was paper writing crunch time. I had to write 20 pages, three papers. I just kept myself in my house, writing, reading, writing, reading, editing. And by the end of the week, I realized I had not seen a human person. I had not talked to anybody. I didn't talk to anybody in my church. I didn't talk to anybody in my family. So yesterday, which was Saturday, I started making some calls and messaging people and such. Did I choose the right thing? I probably had to get my work done, but I prioritized work over family and over people. Was that the right choice? I remember my grandma, she was a great cook and she was the fun grandma. She was the one where I tell my mom, I wanna go live with grandma, whatever I was mad at my mom. And she was the life of the party. She was an extrovert and she would always host the big family meals. And we had a big family when you included all the cousins and we would have three tables set around the dining room. And grandma, instead of making the simple fare that she's really good at, she would read women's magazines and find the, the, the trendiest recipes. And of course she hadn't made them before. So she had a hard time with the timing, getting everything ready. Always, right before dinner, she would be calling my grandpa into the kitchen to help her. He would be cussing, she would be crying. And I would just think, I don't want them to be miserable. And then the food that they served, us kids hated it. The one that we still, us cousins that we, we laugh about is grandma's oxtail soup. No kid wants to eat the tail of an animal, that I can tell you. So we're trying to choke down our oxtail soup and just said, why couldn't we have had a hamburger or pizza or peanut butter and jelly, anything but oxtail soup. And then she also made this uh, jello salad with the gelatin cubes all cut up. She spent a lot of time on it, but then she put sour cream on the top. It was like, oh, we thought it was whipped cream. It, anyways, you get the picture. We just wanted grandma to play with us like she always did cards and laugh and tell stories and play board games and we don't want her crying in the kitchen and grandpa cussing alongside of her oh my goodness so our gospel story tells a similar story so jesus and his disciples visited mary and martha at their home and the two women who were they were sisters they were really happy to see their good friend jesus and the disciples that he brought with them and Martha's priority was to cook a meal for her guests. And she had to cook for a lot of people. There was, you know, 12 disciples. There was Jesus, there was Mary and Martha, there was probably their brother Lazarus. And sometimes Jesus traveled with more than just his 12. He had a whole bunch of followers. So who knows how many people were in their house? Well, Martha took it upon herself to cook an elaborate meal worthy of Jesus. She wanted her sister to help her, but her sister wanted to listen to Jesus teach instead. And so Martha's getting angrier and resentful and irritated, and I'm sure she's shooting her sister Mary dirty looks as she's doing all the work and bringing in drinks for everybody, and Mary's just sitting there listening, and Martha's doing all this work, and she's slaving in the kitchen. And finally, she's had it, and she tells Jesus, make my sister help me. She's just sitting there listening. She needs to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha. And I'm sure this is what he said. It's not in the scripture, but he probably is a kind man. And he probably said, you know, hospitality is always important. But you chose the better, but your sister chose the better thing. She spent time, she chose to spend time with me. And think about that, my friends. We don't have to make big, elaborate, fancy meals for our loved ones. Some days you pull out a box of cereal and milk, right? You put a frozen pizza in the oven. You do whatever so that you can spend the majority of your time with your loved ones. Because Martha not only missed the opportunity to hear Jesus teach, 
she missed the opportunity to be with her sister and with the other disciples and have that wonderful camaraderie. Now, the other thing that's important for us to learn from this is that Martha's priority was to make the food. And she expected the other women in the household, which was Martha, or was Mary, she expected Mary to have the same priority, but she didn't. And we have a tendency sometimes to think that our priority should match everybody else's, and that's not fair. So what I would recommend you do the next time you are feeling resentful in a, a family situation, realize that you don't have to keep that priority. So for example, if you are cleaning up after your family while they're having fun playing a game and you're feeling resentful, stop and join them in the game. And then later on, recruit them to help you. You can change your priorities at that time and choose the better thing. Because it's important to remember that we need to spend time with our family. So let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of family and good times and ask for your care in times of challenge. We ask you to heal our disputes that have caused division over the years. And may our relationships be renewed through your love. We pray for safety, guidance, joy, and most of all, we pray for love. In Jesus' name, amen. So my friends, go forth in your week and think about ways that you can prioritize time with your family because you don't want to miss anything and be, be regretful later like I am with time spent away from my daughter and my son. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Spend time with your family. Amen. Have a great week.